I hope this finds you doing well. Uh, this morning, I want to look at um, Isaiah chapter number 25. Um, it is uh, incredible how the prophet gives these words that we see in, in the New Testament um, reaffirmed and full of promise. Uh, he starts off in verse 1, he says, O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. And I thought, well, that really is the foundation of everything that we live from. Um, the foundation for us as the children of God, the beloved children of God, is always remembering that God is God and we're not. That he has given us promises and that our part is to have a heart of thanksgiving. And so we remember every day who's God, who's on the throne, who can we trust? And so then uh, with that as our firm foundation, that we're no longer uh, victims and subject to the whims of the world or the enemy, then we can exalt him and praise him because we know we, that he has done wonderful things, that his plans will be fulfilled. You live in the world, looks like everything's going to hell in a handbasket. Uh, it's chaotic. Your life is filled with stress and troubles and questions. And you say, God's on his throne. He's faithful. He will fulfill his plans, even when I don't see it, even when I don't understand. But in verse four, he says, for you have been a stronghold to the poor, a stronghold to the needy in his distress, a shelter from the storm and a shade from the heat. Who is he for? He's for us. He doesn't love us because we're rich and famous and wealthy. He is our stronghold in all of our weakness. Remember that Jesus came to be our sufficiency. Paul says that when we are weak, then we're strong because he's our stronghold in all of our needs, in all of our distress. In verse six, he says, on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food, full of marrow, of aged wine, well-refined, and he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all people, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces and the reproach of his people. He will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. Now think about that. He has promised that there is a time coming in which he is going to prepare the greatest of feasts, aged wine, the best wine available, the best food available, a great and grand celebration when the enemy has finally been defeated and he says, what? He swallows up death. He wipes away every tear. He takes away all of our reproach. Now remember, it's because we waited for him. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. You know, we use the terminology, you know, I got saved. And it, it, that is a, 
it's not an improper thing. I mean, there's a point where we put our trust in the Lord. But the scripture also talks about we are being saved and we will be saved. So these are the, the, the promises of God. Because in our distresses, in our trials, we can feel overwhelmed. And he says, don't worry. I'm planning a great feast, the richest of foods, the, the best of wines, and it'll be a grand celebration. For we have waited on him. We've trusted him. And so we can be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Because again, who's the source of our salvation? He is our salvation. The person who came to become what we were so he could live in us. He is our salvation. He wipes away every tear. If you go into the book of Revelation at the very uh, end in chapter 21, verse 4, he again, John says, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death will be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. This is our promise. In John, he told us, you know, though we die, we will live if we believe in him. So physical death is not the end, though it brings us temporary so uh, sorrow and loss. He said, there's a time coming when all the tears, will be wiped away, that all the mourning, all the crying, all the pain, all the illness will be gone. This is a wonderful promise. Paul wrote to the Corinthians in chapter 15. He says, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. And he has given us this beautiful promise. He paid it all. So in the meantime, it may sure feel like it's going to be a meantime. But he says, keep your eyes fixed on this foundation. You are my God. I don't have to be in control because you are my God. I don't have to have all the answers because you are my God. And so I exalt you and I praise you because I know your plans from all the past. You are faithful and they are sure. You and I have an incredible stronghold in Jesus Christ who lives in us and so desires to express his life through us. When it seems like everything is falling apart, remember, he's faithful. And there is this beautiful celebration awaiting. So hang on. And when you feel like you can't hang on, remember, he's always hanging on to you. Have a great day.